10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 392. Hey, everybody, welcome back to episode 392 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. This week, we are doing part three on learning the amazing jazz standard Sweet Sue. We have given you an exercise to learn the melody by ear, uh, to learn the words. And then last week, I gave you a little handy assignment on being able to play over the A section. Now, this week, we are going to get into the bridge. The bridge is actually the only part of the tune that requires a little bit of a closer look. Um, the A sections are very, very easy. It's just that two, five over and over and over again. And we talked about how we could simplify that even further and not even worry about the two, five. But the bridge is actually going to take a little bit of inspecting uh, because there is some harmonic motion there and it does a few unexpected things uh, that we should be aware of and ready to handle on our end. So last week, just as a quick little review, we talked about how the A section is simply just two, five, one. So all that the chords consist of is two for a bar, then five, then back to two, then five, and then we play one for four bars. So, a little bit of context there. Now, let's look at the bridge. So, if you have your PDF for this week, you will find the chords for the bridge on there. So, what happens in bar 17, which is where the bridge happens, is that all of a sudden we see the one chord become a dominant chord. And then we see this half step descending motion with dominant chords. So, one bar of the concert F7. Then down to concert E7 for a bar, then E flat seven, and then D7. And that sets us up that D7 is actually the five of a concert G minor seven. So that's kind of where the bridge arrives. Let's hear that real quick. So F, E, E flat, D, G minor. And then one of my favorite, favorite things in all of music happens uh, in the last two bars of the bridge, which is we go to a minor four chord. And that sets us up to go back to the A section. Let's go over that again. So one, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, back into the A. And so on and so forth. So you can tell by the first four bars of the bridge that, you know, we should probably work on this. Those descending dominant chords and half steps, they do require a little bit of practice and uh, figuring out how to deal with them. Um, so one of the things that I am the most fond of when it comes to something like this is taking an approach that's based off of voice leading. So finding a voice, an important voice, and following that voice and trying to do something that is close to the note that we started on uh, in the next measure. So the, the shortest distance between an important note and the next important note. Now, obviously, if we have these chords descending in half steps, the voice leading is actually not going to be very hard. So let's think about a really, really important note over any chord, let alone a dominant chord, and that would be the third. So if we're in F, if we are playing over F7 and we play the third, then what we want to do is we want to trace that third down. And I know it's going to stay thirds because if the chords are moving down in half steps, then obviously the thirds are moving down in half steps. So if you look at uh, on the PDF, I called it voice leading model one. So we're just going to trace those thirds down for the first four measures. And 
And then we're on this F sharp over a concert D7 chord, and we're going to G minor next. So the obvious move here is to go back up a half step to the root. Okay, so now we have this. And then when we get to the B flat minor six chord, we realize that we could just stay on G because it is the sixth. So now following our voice leading model of always using the closest note that we possibly can that fits into the chord, we have this for the bridge. Now, what can we do with that? Well, once I figure out what the good voice leading is, I'll try to incorporate some other notes and try to come up with something that sounds a little bit more slick than, you know, just holding the whole note over each chord, right? So what I've done in the next example on the PDF is uh, the variation on voice leading model one. So what I'm doing is I'm using this little motif which involves the fifth as well as the third. So I'm just jumping from the, the third up to the fifth on each one of those chords, okay? So the first four bars sounds like, like, like I just played. Okay? And then what I do on the next four bars is I just vary and develop that little motif that I came up with but I'm still using the voice leading. So then when we get to the G minor chord, I'm playing this. And then I just repeat it again. So on the G minor chord, it ends up being one to three. And then on the B flat minor chord, it ends up being six to one. So you could go and you could write I don't know, a dozen different examples using that initial voice leading as your guide, uh, basing what you're doing off of that. And I think that would be really valuable for you. So let's look at another voice leading point, another really important voice leading point. Okay, so where else can we go? Well, after I think about the third, my mind naturally goes to the seventh. So what if we were to start on the seventh of F7? and we were to move down in half steps on sevens. Now here, I'm playing a C over a D7, and I have a G minor chord next. So now I have a choice to make. I could either go down to the third, or I could go up to the fifth. I think I'm gonna go up to the fifth, because I know when I get to the B flat minor chord, I can move that down a half step, which is really cool. So now I have this. as my voice leading model. So now I can come up with more little motives based off of this. And I think what I'll do is this, I'm gonna come up with a little four note motive that goes from the seven, jumps down to the five, goes to six, and then comes back up to seven. So, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna to try to move it through every chord. So I know that I can just take it down by half steps for the first four bars again. Now what I'm gonna do is, over the G minor chord, I'm gonna play five, three, four, five. I'll play it again. Then over the B flat minor six chord, I'm gonna play three, one, two, three. So I like that, I like that little motive. And can you see how if you practiced a whole bunch of this stuff, 
you would be starting down the path to these long lines that if you study enough of these voice leading points, they'll become like launching pads, but you will also know how to connect the chords together and your lines will naturally become a little bit longer. See, it just starts to, the more you investigate the chord progression and the more you do with it, with some of this voice leading stuff in mind, the more apt you are to be able to pull some of the stuff off on the fly. And that's the goal. That's a, that's a lot of the goal of what our practicing is. Okay. So how are you going to practice this this week? Well, what I would like you to do is practice those two voice leading models. So the one from the third and the one from the seventh. And I want you to practice my little uh, motives that I came up with um, that I'll include on the PDF. And then I'm also going to give you some trading tracks where we just loop the bridge and we play back and forth. And through that process, along with your study of the voice leading, you should start to be able to wrap your ears and your brain around the chord changes to this bridge. So that's your action step is go in, uh, play the exercises, uh, come up with a couple of your own motives based off of the voice leading, the two voice leading models that I've given you, and then turn on that trading track and trade with me. Okay. And through the action of doing along with the uh, mental work, you know, the the brain work of figuring out where those uh, voice leading paths are and coming up with your own ideas. Those two things combined, the action step plus the thinking and figuring out step will mean that you really start to be able to get around uh, this this bridge progression, which does actually, you sort of need to know what's going on and you, you need to at least consider the chords. There's ways to play over them, but uh, you do have to know some of that harmonic motion that's going on, in my opinion, okay? Um, that being said, if you would like the PDF and the trading tracks and the, all the stuff that goes along with this episode, uh, we're a listener-supported show, which means that you can find all that stuff on our Patreon page for a small monthly donation. Um, you can find that by going to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, clicking on one of the Patreon banners, or going to patreon.com and just searching for the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson podcast. You can get your hands on all that stuff that I just mentioned so that you can actually practice this stuff this week with some awesome tools and you can find it all there. Thank you to our new patrons this week. Thank you to Amy, PD, and Pear. Thank you so much for joining up with the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family, choosing to support this podcast. It means the world to me, and I hope you enjoy your materials. So again, that's 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners or patreon.com and search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast. You do get instant access as soon as you sign up and we would be thrilled to have you in the family and supporting the show. Hope you all had a great week. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy as always. And we'll see you next week. We'll wrap up this series on Sweet Sue with an etude. Bye everyone. <laughs>